Hunter S. Thompson is known for the new journalism he had pioneered with books like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas and Hell's Angels, but he originally planned to change the world with a novel. He began the novel called The Rum Diary in 1959 as a 22-year-old journalist. Now, 40 years later, it has been resurrected. It is a story of a group of hard-drinking, hard-living reporters living in San Juan, something that he knows a little bit about. <laughs> I'm pleased to have him back at this table, my friend, Dr. Thompson. Welcome back, and I think it is entirely appropriate, sir. Indeed. Great to see you. Yeah, that's fun. It, that you bring me, in the grand tradition, Is something there, from... The from, Lilies of Paradise. From, where did you steal this? <laughs> I didn't steal it, though. You did steal it. I'm past You borrowed that. it. Yeah. No, I... Uh, <laughs> If, these were present. Uh, I'm honored. I, was, I don't want to take. Yeah. I don't want to take this light from of, the, my of the receiving of it. I but I also want to these. catch the humor of where it might have come from. <laughs> uh, this, uh, this time I didn't steal them from a uh, you know a market on the side of the street. <laughs> yeah, these are great. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah? Yeah, you want to just, just you know, do what? You want to fund all these things? You know? it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. It's, uh, it's a bird's of paradise. <laughs> yes, it indeed We need a little more of a <laughs> yes, spray back there. Yeah, but you know what is the thought behind it? It makes a real difference. So, yeah, well, I, I, so kept, I kept the other parts. Of, I have a gigantic spray at the hotel. <laughs> I'm going to put those right yeah. there so I can take them home right, right, and great. put them in a place of honor. Yeah. All right, so let's, let, let's in our make use of this time. You started this 19, what, 55? No, uh, more like 59. 59, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so some might ask. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Why forty years? Oh, well, I was a novelist then. You know, yeah. I went. You know, I was on the road. Uh, yeah, like you can do at age twenty-two. You yeah. Belt. And I went to San Juan uh, to do the normal jobs. You know, right. like we've done all of us on the soldier circuit. <laughs> That's yeah. what we're talking about. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a job in San Juan, and I was, I was writing a book, and Bill Kennedy, uh, the great Bill yeah, Kennedy, yeah, now the, uh, the uh, eminent novelist, was then the managing editor of the San Juan Star. Right. He was a journalist. I was a novelist. <laughs> <laughs> and he, Look what it, happened. Yeah, he refused to hire me. Called me a swine. <laughs> called you a swine. Yeah, yeah, fool. Yeah, <laughs> beatnik, and. Uh, we, we go way back, but uh, you know, Kennedy helped me. It was a good time. It was one of those, you know, when you, uh, there's a kind of confluence of talents and people. Uh, it's not often that you, yeah. you know, try to get a job on a junk newspaper and find Kennedy struggling along as a managing editor. You're like, hey, gods, you know, with these drunken Swedes, we can't get any police reporters. It was a real, it was a real thing. And uh, I just started writing it then. And I gave it up. Did you give it up because he told you you ought to publish it after you die, posthumously? <laughs> no, I gave it up because it bounced about seven times. <laughs> because what? It bounced about seven oh, times. I got, I got the uh, you know the standard list of rejection slips. Yeah, right. And uh, yeah, I came back from South America, and I got into the politics of the 60s and 70s. It was a full-time job. And... Yeah, I became the uh, journalist, and Kennedy became the novelist. This <laughs> is a very eerie kind of shift. But you, you very much wanted to be a novelist at that time. I mean, that was the drive. Yeah, yeah. I thought, it, you know, to me, a writer was a novelist. I brought something over here for the Joseph Conrad thing. Yeah, the influence What, what, what Joseph under. Conrad thing? Oh, help! Help! <laughs> No one is helping me. All right, well, we can't do that now. All right. <laughs> uh, so, so you, you, it's taken so long to do it because? Well, I wrote... I, I know you've had other things to do, right? Yeah. And you've been writing yeah. all those letters that you were keeping all of those copies of. I did that before. <laughs> yeah, it's Doug Brinkley's job. He, he sorts the letters out. Yeah. I have to live with that. But I, this, uh, I've been talking about this. It's on all these you know, books by Harry Thompson. Right. Right. Everybody's saying, well, uh, I can't seem to find the rum dairy. Yeah. Where is the rum dairy? And I, uh, I thought, uh, well, we have a little time with this. It's kind of a romantic notion, you yeah. know, that and money. And uh, I, I was faced with the idea, with the fact of having to dig out my 40-year-old, you know, story. Yeah. Can't change it. 
and confronting it, like, ye gods. <laughs> this is me. This is the world I lived in. So I, I approach it as a writer. It's a good story. It's a, it's a, it's, what's the story? <laughs> I knew you'd ask me. What? What? Uh, it, it's, it's a story of uh, what I call a vagrant journalist. Yes. And they're still all over the world. Wherever they're English language newspapers, you know, you people who travel from the Bangkok Post, they're always, there's always an English lang language newspaper in some. Right. You know, there's one in Kazakhstan now. There's a Margaritaville one. Kazakhstan. <laughs> well, speaking of Margarita, here's what Buffett says. Oh, yeah, the yeah. rum diary shows a side of human nature that is ugly and wrong, but it is a world that Hunter Thompson knows in the nerves of his neck. This is a brilliant tribal study and a bone in the throat of all decent people. <laughs> <laughs> that from the kid from Margaritaville. Yeah. Well, I think Buffett knows that world. All right, but let me just stay uh, with Yeah, he does. He does. Let yeah. me stay with it. Here's what we've been talking about, William Kennedy, you know, the P P Pulitzer Prize winning author of Iron Weed. The tools Hunter Thompson would use in the years ahead, bizarre, wit, mockery without end, redundant excess, supreme self-confidence, the narrative of the wounded meritorious ego, and the idiopathic anger of the righteous <laughs> outlaw. <laughs> idiopathic. Man, I had to look that up. I would do. Yeah. Idiopathic. We're all there in his precocious imagination in San Juan. There, too, were the beginnings of his future as a masterful American prose stylist. I said that that way so it could just ring in your ears. Yeah. Masterful like American prose stylist. Yeah. That's... I... I I bow to that. That's, uh... See, you really do. I mean, and deep inside of you, I mean, for those of us who, it is this sense of how much the word, despite everything, despite everything, what most meaning is most meaningful to you is prose stylist, is the written I word. Like the, I like the music. I'm a music freak. <laughs> no way. Yeah. I go totally by rhythms. And uh, I mentioned Conrad, the influences that I were I was under at the time, which is very hard for a 22 year old. With here, dry line from the preface to the uh, the uh, the nigger of the Narcissus. Have you ever read that booker? No. Oh man, it's a, <laughs> it, it maybe it's a final statement on right the writing of prose in America and yeah. and the world. What's the title? It's just the preface to the nigger of the Narcissus, oh, oh, oh. Conrad's right, uh, great right, story. Right. And he says, uh, any work that aspires to the condition of art must carry its justification in every line. Holy Wow. <laughs> art, is long, justification. art is long and life is short and success is very far off. Now try to justify that. At the age of 22, <laughs> when you think, hot damn, man, it can bounce. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had heard teachers, and Kennedy, of course, was merciless. Yeah. But Conrad is the most merciless of all teachers. Conrad gives no ground. That uh, sets a high bar. Hey, really, the, the highest bar. Yeah. And I'm, in, I'm always reminded when you really get into it of how you know, where the bars are and who the champs, you know, champions are. Yeah. And I, I haven't gotten to Conrad yet. He's, he's a very solemn man, you know, he didn't laugh much. Yeah. But this was who a great writer. Who are the champions for you as novelist in America? America, well, when I was growing up, uh, you know, at age I was, I'm not sure how I drifted into this, but I got into the influence of, I lived here in New York. Yeah, I went to Columbia and took classes at the New School. I fell in, under bad influences, but it was uh, like, uh, it was Garcia Lorca, uh, Fitzgerald, Hemingway, of course, Faulkner. I take no pride in this question, but Paul Kemp is you. No, not really. I didn't. No? I, mean, I didn't. Uh, your... Well, I, I, since I was doing it right then, I, I was very careful not to make any one character me. But it's not your sensibilities? It's not? Well, my sensibilities really inform all the characters, but I tried to split myself up. I tried to do what uh, Fitzgerald did with 
with Gatsby in the uh, using the Nick Carraway character mm -hmm. and the Gatsby, the Jimmy Gatz, mm -hmm. and both the same people when I was looking, you know, right. from outside. Right, right. And uh, I had a hard time with that. A lot of things look very simple until you try to do them. Yeah, it's like a quintuple flip off a you know high board. And uh, yeah, so I was really both of those characters, and uh, the whole thing is it's, it's very real. I'm not sure where I find myself. Sometimes in Yemen, sometimes yeah. in Kemp. Right. Uh, What's the relationship between Fritz Yemen and his girlfriend? Oh, that's one of these uh, young love things. You know, you fall in love uh, uh, at a party in New York and say, well, <laughs> hey, I got a job in Puerto Rico. Why don't you come on down with me? Yeah. 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 Come on down. We have a beach house. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. beautiful girl. Uh, so, Ms. Chenault, your ex wife? Well, not really. Not, not in any. Like, I, I tried to. You're, you're, informed yeah, the by situation. you're informed by everything yeah. you do. Yeah. yeah. You know how much I like you. And so, so having said that, uh, okay, no, come on. Okay. Okay. Here it comes. Right. Right. right, right. Why is it that this is the, I mean, here's a guy, you, with your dedication to prose. Why is this, this, the first novel you have written? When you wanted to be a novelist, and don't tell me the answer is because you've been doing all these other things. I mean, is the answer that you sort of, you know. It was not rewarding. Uh? Well, I didn't get paid for it. You know, and that what I saw yeah, there I mean, was you, you love Conrad this much, and then you, you still can't say that that art is not its own reward. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> art is not its own reward, boy. Where have you been living? <laughs> what? Where have you been living? Yeah, uh, yeah I know. I in know. heaven, yeah, in, in heaven. It's like you know. Uh, no, it's not for for a writer, professional writer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, you know, I, I think Truman Capote said it. If it's not published, yeah, it's not there. I didn't do it. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's part of the uh, the process. And the other part is, uh, you must have fuel. You know, and fuel with enough expense money, all things are possible. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that comes from the seventies. That's what things are fun. <laughs> okay, so what's the answer? You nobody paid you enough money to write a novel, or are you? Didn't, you know, you had to go off and do things that you could make money, so you didn't have time. Oh. I mean, these are rather flimsy excuses, aren't they? <laughs> Probably so. You know, they're <laughs> yeah, all, they are. They're, they're, compared to Conrad, I'm you know I just no, well I, I no shrink, compared to your potential. Flimsy. I mean, yeah, I should no, have compared been writing to novels. your potential, this is. You Charlie, know, this Charlie. is about 35 years too late. Charlie, you're a journalist. Now, what if you had had a choice between, <laughs> here you, you had an assignment yeah. to write a book about the Hells Angels. Right. And you're, you know, you're kind of nursing your novel along. It's been rejected seven times by yeah. seven okay. respectable publishers. <laughs> your, your best friend, Kennedy, has told, has right. told you, well, really, that sucks. Yeah, right. And then suddenly... Uh, Somebody comes along with an offer to hey, go off with the Hells Angels. There's a war on. Yeah. You know, and then there was... Uh, in the 60s, it was a war. Right. And I was paid at all the expenses I needed to go everywhere you know, on the front. It, was, it really was like a, a war. And I didn't... Uh, I didn't have the time, uh, you know, to, uh, <laughs> to tend to art. Okay, then why now? Why do you have the time now? I had to make time. Ah, yeah. sir. <laughs> yeah. Is this not self-contradictory? No, no. You I had mean, to make time. You could have made time in the 80s. No, but I could have. Yeah. But this time I had to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you mean you had to? Well, the book was going to be published. Oh, I see. So, uh, so you yeah. had to finish. Hey, I was prepared to, like anything, that, you know, let, <laughs> let them publish anything after I'm dead. Yeah. But I'm really glad I didn't uh, do that. Did you think well, this was going to be the great American novel when you were writing it? I had that hubris, I guess. You know, <laughs> but it, I, it's a great Puerto Rican novel. You know, I think. <laughs> the great Puerto Rican novel. Yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, yeah. I had a sense it was going to be. Yeah. I had a sense, that sense about everything I was doing. What was this? Uh, what did you think of the movie? Uh, about you. That's funny. Johnny Depp asked me that right. question last night on the telephone. <laughs> By the way, I like him a lot. Yeah, I do too. Man, he's, he's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to uh, 
do something. He's going to work in this. We're going to make a movie of this one. This is a melancholy book. Yeah. This is a, this is a, a book. It's good though. He's good. But so he'll play. He'll play Doctor T too, huh? He'll well, play Paul Kemp. There's this room for uh, for movement here. This is this isn't the rigid kind of uh, yes. uh, interior monologue. Yeah. Uh, cell that the uh, Vegas book was like, you know, what, what, yeah. what's happening is what you're thinking, not what's going on. Nobody thinks much here. You know, they do. No, there's not a lot of thinking. It's like, you know. So, what did you, how did you answer uh, Johnny Depp's question? What did you think of the movie? Oh, yeah. I liked it really. It's an experience. What the hell, you have to, uh, you know, you have to go through the fire, and I would have maybe done it differently, but I'm not a movie director. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good at books. So I liked it, yeah, but I wouldn't, uh, no, I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't have my, you know, my children <laughs> see it every night. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah, but I don't know, I don't know how that could, how, that book was structured, so it's not going to really be edifying. You know, there's no way to make that thing a hero story. Yeah. What people of all kinds of, for no reasons and different heritages and <laughs> criminal backgrounds, go into a, a scum-ridden place like Las Vegas and behave worse than the the people they're you know viewing. Yeah. So that's not a that's not one of those uplifting books. But I uh, that was a that was a work of art. In a way, yeah. Did I read somewhere that your British publisher asked you not to come over and promote it? <laughs> <laughs> no, what matter they've been trying to get me over there. Oh, they are. So that's not true. Hurley, I just now that you mentioned that. I'm sorry, but I forgot. Him. <laughs> what are you trying to do to my I, table? No, it's one of these flimsy oak tables. Yeah, I know it is. the, the center. Trying to test its I stability. Would, I wouldn't like this. What? No, this, this is a great table. This is one of those things like it's a wall you can hit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's right. you, Boy, I hit, I hit a wall last night. You better lose. You can more likely lose your hand than you ought to damage the table. Oh man, I hit a wall last night, and you have to know the difference. You know, living this way. <laughs> and last night, and popped up a oh, white wall that looked just the same as this. Yeah. It was stone concrete. Yeah, well, why were you doing it? What, what, what precipitated having, that action? Having, having fun. Just having fun. Yeah. yeah. I've been reading this uh, Remnick's book about David, Ali. David Remnick on Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a great book, Absolutely. as you just mentioned to me. Yeah. yeah. But, you like uh, boxing. I liked it when Ali was there. Yeah. You know, the, the boxer. The real thing. Yeah, I don't like it now. Uh, well, there's no one to like now. Oh, it's, it's like, like wrestling. I believe that uh, all and, of and this... Heavyweight. I think boxing and wrestling are about to and, and kind of merge. Oh, God, I hope, not. I hope not. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, you know, in other words, what they're doing is they're promoting all these older guys who it's all about show and not about skill. Yeah, but you know, it's all these thugs being thrown out of the uh, NFL and, you know, people who slit, you know, roommates' throats in college and right. still run for a thousand yards. I think they're all going to be in some kind of weird wrestling league. And that's going to happen in, you know, like, well, maybe. two years. Yeah, and that's maybe. Yeah, about the time well, we see. Well, that's true. Yeah, that, that'll end, somebody will pick it up. Hey, yeah. you know, in the year 2000, you're going to see Bill and Monica in Paris together, reunited <laughs> before the century's over. So what do you think about Bill and Monica? I mean, what do you think? I mean, the president you admire? No, I don't admire You don't admire him. No. Yeah. No. I did endorse him, yeah. you know, in a war once. You know, I think he's, uh... Uh... They kind of destroyed the standard for what's fun in politics for good people. I think once I said that Nixon uh, was great because he brought the best people into politics, and Clinton is going to be famous for driving all but the worst ones out. And I think that's what's happening. You know, the, uh, this is a democracy, and if you don't participate, somebody else is going to for you. And that's what's happening here. Less than four out of every ten voters are going to go to the polls. And then we have this, uh, this subsequent mess where it's all left in the hands of Nazis, like Starr, and I believe, well, fascists, yeah. Starr, Jesse Helms, these people should all be uh, hung by their heels like Mussolini. And maybe Clinton along with them. <laughs> that's, well, I hope we don't go that far. <laughs> well, what the hell? It is, uh, you know, it's a decadence, the last ten years of the century. Weird things are going to happen. 
where, where do you think you'll be when the, we, we, the clock ticks forward for the year 2000? That's a tricky one. I don't really expect to be here. But, you know, I have... Come on, you mean you don't expect to be here? We're talking about a year well, off. <laughs> yeah, it was different, of, you know, years ago. Charlie, I go, every time I get on an airplane, every, where's my knife? God damn it, these people. I don't know what you're I'm just going to show you how, how temporal life is. But I don't have my tools. Well, I don't bet. Dirty yeah. animals. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it can end any second. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. It's, uh, you think about that whenever you get on a plane. This thing could, could be over here in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what's going to be your last thought? <laughs> Well, see, I know I have to come back around. And I like that little rest between trips. You know, I, I'm a road man, really, for the, for the Lords of Kerma. We've been through this, I guess. Yeah. Yes, we have. <laughs> All right, let me, let, me, let me say one more thing, because I've got to get out of here. Uh, the next novel, Polo is My Life. Hot dog ring. Uh, perverse in that one. Yeah. <laughs> no more of this innocent stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's Polo is My Life? Oh, well, it's uh, how I got... Well, I joined the uh, the polo crowd by accident. Yeah, you know, one of these situations where uh, I remember this woman. Uh, the title comes from it. Talking to this woman that I'd developed a certain fondness for, who had for me a polo person, and uh, I would say, "Well, you know, if you had a violent husband and cops all over me." Chasing me, and I said, well, let's go to Australia and get on the train across Australia. And she said, you don't understand. Polo is my life. I can't run away with you. Who would take care of my ponies? <laughs> That's where Polo is my life comes from. That's a great. That's and I great. thought, oh. Yeah. Who would take a woman with her prior yeah. sight? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hunter Thompson, this is the long lost novel, The Rum Diary. Thank you, my friend, for coming. Hey, man. It's See always you. a pleasure. My yeah. And then, uh, what are you doing later on? You, uh, we're going to go over and, yeah, Doug Brinkley's reading. Yeah. Oh, is it tonight? Uh, yeah. The Arts Club. Yeah. I'm going to see Ed Bradley. <laughs> a, con a, yeah. a, a convocation of all the well, Aspen groups. a little, little fun, yeah. yeah I'm with the girl. I don't know what you're, if okay. you're wandering around. Let uh, me say goodbye to this audience. Thank yeah, you very much yeah. for joining us. Hunter S. Thompson, The Rum Diary. Thank you.